Hello and welcome to this webinar on using UK data service data in dissertations. Uh, my name is Jen and I work at the University of Manchester, uh, part of the UK data service user and support and training team. Okay, so let's go. So here's an overview of what I'll be talking about. Um, I'm going to start with a short introduction to the UK data service. I'll briefly talk about finding and accessing data. I'll then move on to give an overview of the resources that we have and that will be particularly useful for students doing dissertations. And then I'll finish by talking about our dissertation award. I'm going to speak for about 15 minutes and then we'll have time for questions. Um, I've deliberately kept this session brief with the aim of not repeating too much of the information that's found elsewhere, but I will also be highlighting uh, where to go next if you want more information. This is a new webinar topic for us, and so we're hoping to find out more about what's useful for students, and so any feedback afterwards will be very useful. When it comes to time for questions, um, you can ask them by typing into a questions box, that's part of the webinar control panel. If you can't see it, look for an arrow that maximizes and minimizes the control panel. And um, feel free to type the questions as they come to you, um, and I can pick them all up at the end. Um, and just to let you know that you will be on route um, throughout the webinar. So what is the UK Data Service? So it's a research resource that allows people to access a wide range of social science data. We also provide training and support through activities um, such as webinars. And we're funded to do this work by the ESRC, which is the Economic and Social Research Council. So what kind of data do we have? So the wide range of data in our catalogue includes um, data from surveys of the UK and other countries, longitudinal studies um, that follow individuals through time, the U um, data from the UK census, and data from qualitative studies such as interview transcripts and field notes, and international macro data such as the World Bank indicators. And together, um, the data in our collection cover a wide range of social science topics, including things like work, family life, health, and finances. So at this point, I have a quick quiz question for you. And um, which of the following, here we go, so which of the following do you think we have in our collection? You can pick as many as you think we have. So we've got 30 years of data from a survey of British public opinion, interview transcripts relating to the regulation of bingo, samples of records from the UK Census, transcripts of parliamentary debates, and data from children born in 2000 at six time points. 30 years of data from a survey of British public opinion. Most of you think that's right, and that's true. That relates to the British Social Attitude Survey. Interviews, transcripts relating to the regulation of bingo. Um, we do have this in our collection. So um, it comes from uh, quality, one of the qualitative studies in our collection that looks at the regulation of this um, profitable gambling form. And samples of records from the UK Census, so researchers can access um, census microdata, which are samples of individual records from the census that have been fully anonymised. Uh, transcripts of parliamentary debates. So yes, this is something that we don't have. Um, Researchers can access this, um, and it's available through Pansard, but not through the UK Data Service. And data from children born in 2006 time points, this comes from the Millennium Cohort Study. So this is a longitudinal study that's been following the lives of people born at the start of the millennium. You might also ask why you might want to use our data in a dissertation. So a big one is that it can save resources, such as time and money, which can be very limited when doing an undergraduate dissertation. And it can also mean you can use data that you couldn't collect yourself um, and therefore do research that you couldn't do otherwise. So for example, you might be able to use data from previous points in time, from different countries, um, and also be able to access large nationally representative samples. So naturally there are some disadvantages too. So you might not find suitable data for your research topic or the data might not be perfect. And it can also be a, a challenge to understand the data. How do we find data? So there is a searchable data catalogue. Um, you just pick search terms, so a bit like Google. And then there are ways to refine and sort your search. You can also access the catalogue, um, so you can access the catalogue from the homepage and also under the Get Data section of our website. Under Get Data, 
Uh, we also have lists of key data sets by data type uh, under the called key data. And there are also theme pages that link to a variety of collections and resources for key topics. So when it comes to access to data, our main message is that students can access the majority of the data in our collections for their research projects. But there are different access arrangements in place, and some data cannot be accessed for undergraduate research projects. So first we've got some open data sets. So these are available without registration or needing to uh, do any authentication. A lot of our data is classed as safeguarded and is available uh, with an end user license. So this is still easily accessible, but it does require registration. For student research projects, students um, should register individually, so a lecturer shouldn't be giving out data, and you shouldn't really use data from previous uh, classes or like learning and teaching. Students and members of staff at UK institutions of higher or further education can register using the, their user, their institutional username and passwords. So what will happen is when you come to sign in, you'll be directed to your own institutional login. You'll need to fill out a short form and agree to some conditions. And then once it comes to downloading a data set, you'll have to set up a project. You'll need to give your project a name, so for example, dissertation project on topic X and to give a short description. Don't worry um, if you don't have all the details sorted. Uh, when you come to write the description, just write what you can. And then you come to assigning the data to your project and you can download it. Special license data comes with additional conditions that need to be fulfilled before you can access the data. Um, these special conditions vary and they may or may not prevent student access. So read the conditions and see in some cases, um, fulfilling the conditions can actually take time. So, for example, sometimes we have to go back to the data owners and ask permission. Uh, and that process can take time, which could be a problem when you're working to a deadline. So think about whether you'd be able to work with that. And if at any point it's not clear to you, um, contact us and ask. Finally, uh, control data in our catalog um, relates to data where participants could possibly be identified and for this reason access to control data is limited and it isn't available to undergraduate students doing research projects. In addition to downloading data, some data collections can be accessed via online tools. Um, two of these are Nestar, uh, which is a tool for exploring many of the survey data sets we have and also UKPS.stat um, is a tool for exploring international databases. These online tools um, sort of allow you to explore data and make things like tables and graphs, which can then be downloaded. And this option can be good for um, students who are perhaps collecting um, their own data, um, but are looking for additional data to perhaps support their discussion. So for example, if, um, they want to include a a chart showing the prevalence of some social phenomenon. You can find um, that we've got lots of guides um, for using these, mostly video tutorials on our website. And now we've on to talk about some of our key resources. So first, um, all the topics that I've mentioned really briefly, um, so far we're all discussed in more detail in other UK data service webinars. So we were about to host um, three introductory webinars. Um, which provide more information about our service, things like finding and accessing data, and then also key issues in reusing data. Um, we are also involved in organising themed webinars, um, which talk about data for specific areas of research. So we've got three coming up soon. Uh, they're on religion, language, spoken, and mental health. And you can sign up for webinars through the events section of our website. All our past webinars are also available on our YouTube channel. And um, so, for instance, you can find um, key data webinars, which all focus on one of the specific types of data that we have in our catalogue, which is survey data or census data. And most of our um, resources that we have are available under the Use Data section of our website. And a really good place to start is our for students as our student source pages. 
So these pages give um, things like information about the types of data that we've got, um, advice on getting started, and they, they highlight some of the best resources for students. And they also link to um, a guide that we have called Using Survey Data, which is specifically written for dissertation students. So the Using Survey Data Guide focuses on project work uh, based on survey data. And it covers different aspects of the research process, including things like developing research questions and designs, finding and accessing data, and getting started with data analysis. And there's are examples and also worksheets to help you through. And the guide is available both online and as a PDF. Also, we've got another uh, dissertation-related guide, um, Dissertations and Their Data, Promoting Research Integrity. This guide will be particularly uh, useful to students and supervisors where the sort of project is about collecting data. And it gives really useful examples of what to do um, and includes templates um, things like such as um, model consent forms that you can use. Back to using data, if you want to learn more about survey, longitudinal aggregate data, you might find our online data skills modules useful. These free modules introduce key aspects of data using videos, quizzes and activities. So for example, the survey module covers how a survey data, uh, how a survey data set is structured, how to examine relationships between variables and sampling. And the student pages also link through to the dissertation award. So this has just been relaunched for this academic year. And the award um, is aiming to recognize outstanding undergraduate dissertations from within the social sciences that include excellent reuse of data. And we're going to be looking to award the three best dissertations from the academic year. Each winner um, will receive a £300 award and publicity via our website, blog and newsletter. For those aware of previous versions, there is a sort of slight change from before where we used to recognise the sort of first, second and third. This time it will be the three best dissertations. So who can enter? Um, it's open to undergraduate students at UK universities from any social science discipline. And then the students must have been able by the UK data service. To end using their institutional email um, by the 18th of May. And if shortlisted, you'll then be asked to submit the full dissertation to send to the judges. So be aware that you might need to do this at the end of May. And then we will announce the winners um, in July. Let's have a look at the entry form. So we've tried to keep the entry form as simple as possible as we understand students are busy and tired at this point of the year. Um, we ask for the title of the dissertation. We ask you to indicate clearly which data you used. You need to describe the research aims and questions. So what did you want to find out and why? And in no more than 200 words. Um, we also want to know about the data and methods you used and how they suited research aims. So for instance, why was that data set that you used the best to use? And this bit's important, as it's where we can see that there's been some sort of real thought into the use of data. And finally, we need you to briefly explain your findings and their implications. And at this point, we want you to include some kind of example of the data you've used to draw your conclusions. So it might be one of your sort of good graphs that you've done or a really insightful excerpt from an interview. So you might find it interesting and useful to look at previous year's entries. Um, you can see here we've had an interesting mix of topics and data sets. To date, we've only received entries using quantitative data and methods, um, but we do welcome entries using qualitative data. And we're also open to entries where um, data available from the UK Data Service has been combined with data from other sources such as the one here at the bottom, um, where data from the census was linked to data from GP practices. So you can read more um, about these previous entries. Um, there's a link on the dissertation award page which takes you through to the title and abstract for the um, winners from previous years. 
So to offer some conclusion, um, I'll emphasize that students can access most of our data for their dissertations, and there are many good reasons to use data from the UK Data Service. If you do choose to use some of these data sources, spend some time thinking about what's realistic. So for example, some data sets are more complex than others. And perhaps look to the student pages um, as these highlight some of those that might be best for people who are starting out. Also look to see if there are any guides that might be able to help you. And we also have a help desk uh, for specific data related queries. We can't offer advice about sort of dissertation plans, um, but we can help if you're having a particular problem understanding one of our data sets. When it comes to doing your references, um, the catalog page for each data set contains citation in, uh, information for citing the data that you've used. And most of all, if you do use our data, uh, think about entering the UK Data Service Dissertation Award.